Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It's now. It's the band you've always wanted to see. You get online as soon as the tickets are released, but it's already sold out. Have genuine fans really snapped up the tickets that quickly, or are ticket touts buying them in bulk so they can sell them on at a much higher price on ticket reselling websites? That's what many genuine fans suspect, and now there's a campaign to make such profiteering illegal. Josh Franceschi of the band You Me at Six went back to one of his favourite venues, Alexandra Palace in North London, to deliver his soapbox. And I should warn you that there is some flash photography in this film. Rock and roll is about breaking boundaries about enjoying yourself. If there's one thing threatening the music industry today, it's ticket towers. I don't just mean the people who stand outside a venue. That's illegal without a street trading license. I'm talking about online ticket touts, individuals or businesses who scout masses of tickets, often using a specialized botnet software so they can resell tickets at a massive profit. When a gig is announced, fans head to primary ticket websites often to be told it's sold out, but most of the time they're not. It's the touts who've bought them, forcing fans to pay hiked up prices on secondary websites. These secondary websites masquerade as fan-to-fan -fan marketplaces, but as we highlighted at the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, they are all dependent upon hardcore ticket touts. One of StubHub's major clients was recently outed as a man from Quebec, who is still scalping and reselling thousands of tickets to UK events. Enough is enough. Genuine fans are being priced out of the equation. Music lovers are consumers too, and consumers have rights. In New York, legislation is in place. The UK must follow suit too. Those profiteering should face prison or a fine. It's what you need. It's what you want. It's this goes beyond consumer protection. It is about cultural access. A number of music businesses have come together to fight back with a new campaign called the Fanfare Alliance. This is an industry that is already suffering from a lack of money coming into it in other ways. If we want the live community to thrive, we need this to change. And Josh Franceschi is here now. And we're also joined by the Conservative MP, Nigel Adams, who supports a change in the law. Welcome to both of you. Josh, first of all, don't ticket resale sites provide an important service here if you do miss out the first time round? Yeah, they do. I, I, they, of course, they serve a purpose, but I think it's about uh, there being a cut-off point as to how far the, the prices can be inflated. You know, I think there are some websites like Twickets, uh, which offer a resale um, a resale mechanism, but that's at face value. Um, and there are other websites that are a little bit more, what we would say, at the fair end of the scale. I think it's the websites that are charging, you know, 20 times the, the face value price. And that is that how high it can go? And give us some examples of some of the sort of prices that tickets can actually go for. In Way into their thousands. We were, mm. When we were talking to the select committee, there was a, a case study with Phil Collins. And I believe uh, it got up as high as £4,000 for two tickets to go see Phil Collins. And didn't they all get sold out in about 15 seconds or something? I mean, how can that be? Um, we've all tried. I think we have all tried to get tickets. I've tried them with a couple of iPads and I've failed recently to do it. Yeah. Um, shouldn't there be technology that stops people buying in bulk? Well, there is. Lots of the primary ticket companies um, do have technology in place to try and stop it happening. But it's an arms race, a technological arms race, and, <laughs> and the and the touts uh, are very good at it. They they have these bots which attack ticket sites and hoover up hundreds and thousands of tickets, and within seconds they're for resale on other sites at inflated prices, and and that's why I want the law changed. Right, but will legislation do what you want it to do in this instance if it is actually about a technological arms race? Well, I, I believe it will. Uh, Josh <laughs> Do you has not? Been, Josh has been fantastically supported, by the way. This is a guy 
uh, who took it upon himself to sell his tickets direct ah. to his fans across a counter in a shop. But there is a there is a problem. It's not a silver bullet. Banning these bots and making it an offence isn't going to solve the whole problem. But they do it in the States, in certain states. In America, you can now go to prison. I want to make it an imprisonable offence as well. Um, but it's, it's a step in the right direction, we believe. There are lots of other things that need to be done as well. Do you support that, then? Yes. You do? Yeah. Um, really, to go, for people to go to jail in these instances, for there to be prison sentences, do you think that will work in terms of deterrent? Uh, I think it will definitely work as a deterrent, but, I mean, if it, this isn't about me trying to go around and lock people up. This is about trying to get the situation as it is changed for fans of live music, because... On a daily basis, I interact with our fan base, whether it be face to face or through social media or what have you. And a lot of them are being priced out of the equation. And that's really my fundamental issue with it. Right. And actually, the ticket resale company that you mentioned, I think, in the film, StubHub, um, gave us a statement saying they support legislation to tackle bot misuse, as they call it. The misuse of these programmes harms all aspects of the ticketing industry, most importantly, fans. And we've consistently supported anti-bots legislation and recently gave evidence to the US Senate Commerce Committee on this subject. And this is one of the biggest issues that the ticket industry faces. Um, they do go on to say that legislation alone can't solve it. So what else needs to be done? I think we need to certainly be looking at how tickets are released. I think in some um, cases you'll have artists and managers that might be complicit in this racket. I mean, touting's been going on mm, since yeah, the Romans have been exactly. putting on shows yeah, in the yeah. Colosseum. But, you know, we're not going to entirely wipe no. this away. But we need, to, we need to take some action, I think, I think having this as an offence is, is a, a right step in the uh, right direction. Right, what do you think? Is it a good idea? Yeah, sound, sounds exactly right. I mean, it's, it's about striking a balance, isn't it? Because nobody wants to stop the process of being able to sell on a ticket that you might not need any longer, mm. and even actually getting a little bit of a margin for it. Yeah. So it's about balance, and make, making sure people can't profiteer about on it. And in terms of industrial-scale hoovering up of tickets, I mean, surely that's crime. Right. I mean, and what do you think? I mean, in a sense, is it a pressing issue for you? Is it something that should be dealt with? Yeah, I think so. I mean, along with the work that Nigel has done, my colleague Sharon yeah. Hodgson for Labour has been job. campaigning on this for a long time as well and that's because for our constituents this really matters. It's not just the fan experience but as you said in the film it's also that this then strangles an industry that is really really important for Britain and brings a huge amount of pleasure to a lot of people and these people are parasites and they ought to be dealt with so well done for doing it. And have you tried to get tickets either successfully or unsuccessfully? Have. I've been unsuccessful. You've yeah. been unsuccessful. I got my Britney <laughs> tickets. You did? But I had to use three phones to do it. Did you? Yeah. How long did it take? Uh, not long actually. I got through within about 20 minutes. Three phones and, and no box. I can <laughs> confirm she was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so it was worthwhile. Yeah. I lost out on Worth Kate Bush, you see. Should ministers get behind um, this? Absolutely. I know um, Karen Bradley, the Culture Secretary, takes this very seriously. She's having meetings today uh, regarding the law enforcement angle of this. I'm meeting with her on Wednesday in a round table at the department with uh, industry representatives. I think we've got a real opportunity. Um, we're debating it today as well in the report stage um, of the Digital Economy Bill. I think there's a real head of steam. It's a cross-party supported issue. The only people who presumably are not in favour of this are the Stan Flashmans of this world and these big-time villains ripping off genuine music fans. Right, and so you're confident that this is going to happen and it'll make a difference? I am, yeah, and I'd also like to say that I think more artists should be speaking up for their fans on this issue. Um, it's, it doesn't take much, really, to put your name on something, and I think this is something worth putting your name on. Um, but, yeah, we are confident it's going to get passed. Thank you to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been getting away with it all my